So as guitar players, we learn shapes. We learn chord shapes, scale shapes, we learn triads, we learn cage shapes, and all these shapes help help us play music and play songs that we like. And we know how to play our songs, we know how to play scales, we know how to play chords, but some of us get stuck in this intermediate stage and it's really hard to advance past that and improve and feel like you have fretboard fluency and confidence in what you're playing and when you're improvising, have confidence in that as well. And this is due to learning those shapes as a beginner and never really needing to know the notes that make up those shapes. So you don't need to know what you're playing to be able to sound good and and be a good guitar player. But if you really want to become a great guitar player and really understand what you're playing and have fretboard fluency, be able to play up and down the neck with confidence and never be lost, then you really need to start focusing on what you're playing. If you look at just a major scale, you have seven notes in a major scale. And within that major scale, those seven notes are the same seven chords that are in a major scale. So your chords in a key are based off of the notes in the major scale. So seven notes is a lot more manageable than 12 notes or even six strings and 12 notes. So we need to start focusing on the simplicity that is music and it's intervals. So if you start embracing the simplicity that is intervals, intervals create the chords. The chords are based on intervals. The scales are all based on intervals and everything in music is intervals. But we as guitar players seem to stay away from intervals and not not want to not want to think about them or anything like that. We want to think about our our scales and try and use our ear. Well, it's very hard to develop your ear. It takes a lot of time. So this is in my opinion somewhat of a shortcut to start playing more melodically, sounding better, having more confidence in what you're doing on the guitar is learn the intervals that you're playing. So anytime you have a chord, you should you should try and understand the chord construction of that. So if you have a major chord, it's it's three notes and those three notes are a one, a major third and a perfect fifth. So it's a one, three, five. And those are intervals and they make up a major chord. If it's a minor chord, it's a one minor third and a perfect fifth. So that third is just flattened a half step and that makes it a minor chord. So if you start understanding that chord construction and applying it and you start finding your intervals on the guitar and understanding them, you can start finding chords up and down the neck as well. So you're still, you're learning new shapes, but you're understanding them. So if you start taking your shapes that you already know, like you have a C chord and you take that C chord and you realize this is a C, so that's my one. Well, if there's a three and a five in it, the next note on your on your second fret of your D string is your three, and then your open note on the G string, which is a G, is your five. So that's your one, three, five, and then, you know, when there's more than just three notes, three notes makes it a triad, but when there's more than that, it's just repeating. So you have, you have more notes, you have another one here, and you have another three. Once you start understanding stuff like that, you can, you can find your way around, so you can, you can find your way around the neck a lot better if you start knowing where are my threes relative to my ones, where are my fives relative to my ones. And you can do this with your scales. So you can just take your scales and start start thinking of them as one scale is seven notes if you're playing a major scale. Obviously, if you're playing a pentatonic scale, it's only five notes, but your pentatonic scales are just based off your major scales. So you just in a major pentatonic, you're just removing your four and your seven, which are intervals. So instead of just flying through your scales when you're playing and doing your licks and everything, start consciously consciously thinking, what notes am I playing when I'm playing this scale? So if you have that C chord again, and you have a C major scale, sorry, a C major pentatonic scale will take because that's the A minor pentatonic scale. C and A minor are relative major and minor, so they share the same notes in the scale. You need to know where your one is. Most importantly, you need to know where that C note is. And start thinking of this in numbers, like scale degrees. So you don't need to know, you don't need to know the actual note names that are in a C chord for chord construction. You just need to know the intervals. I'm here to help you get better at guitar. So if you're a guitar player who wants to get better, then please hit subscribe. And this is going to help you 
This is going to help you really grow your understanding of guitar and your understanding of the guitar neck. So you have a one here on the fifth fret of your G string. Well, if you if you know your major scale, it's whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And what that means is you're taking one, two, three. So two whole steps away is a major third. So that three is also in your C. And then if you were gonna if you were gonna go up strings, it's just like one, two, three. And it's right below your one. And you'll start realizing patterns within these scales, but all these scales are the same. So you know if you know one scale, you know them all. Because they're all the same intervals. So if you have a chord progression that's a C chord, and it was just a C chord. Well when you're soloing over that. You can focus on the notes now that make up that chord because you know the intervals and where they are within that scale. So all those notes I just played was just a one, two, three, and a five. And the three and the five are within that chord, so it sounds good over it. And then if you're gonna move to like a four chord, four chord's a good example because it's not in the major pentaton major pentatonic scale, but you can add it to it because it's part of your major scale and it's and you're playing over a four chord, so you can always add that four when you're playing over that. So you would just count through the scale to find your four and it'd be one, two, three, four. Four is your half step, so if it's whole step, whole step, half step, that gets you to your four. So it's right here on your sixth fret of your B string. So now you know where your four is. Well, if you know where your three was relative to your your one chord, well, your three is the same place relative to your four chord. So you'd have, if you were if you were thinking of this as where's my chord tones of, of the four chord that I'm playing, you have your four here, and then you would have a three here, because it'd be two whole steps away, and then you would have a five here. And that's your four chord. And same thing with five. Any chord that you have in your key, your notes are going to be in your scale. And you can add the notes if they're within the chord while you're soloing. And if you start thinking of it like this, you're going to be able to fly around the, ne the neck. You can start playing a C chord like this. And all I did right there was just take a C chord. I walked it up with a with a one, two, three to the major third interval. And you can start finding inversions like this too. But then you have another triad here. And then now that I know where my one is within that chord, I can walk one, two, three again. And now there's a C chord right here. So I just took a piece of that. And that's a piece of the chord right there, and I know where my one is. It's on the D string at the 10th fret. So I can just walk up one, two, three again. And that's another C chord. So that would be, that would be an octave higher than this C chord. So you can grow exponentially if you start focusing on intervals and you really only need to focus on seven notes. You don't need to focus on the entire guitar. You know your positions of your scales. So if you like to play your pentatonic scales, then use those. If you wanna use your minor pentatonic scale, this works as well. It's just if you're playing a major chord, like an A major chord and you have an A minor pentatonic, you're gonna be missing your major third, but you can always add it. They do that in blues all the time. And that would be adding it right there. So this would be this would be your A note. This would be your minor third. So this would be your major third. So that's that's another thing that you can start adding it when you're playing in your minor pentatonic too. 
and your intervals are still going to be the same distance apart. They're always the same distance. So if you're in if you're in this form and then you want to change positions, well your intervals are always going to be the same distance apart. So say you go up in, instead of being in your form 1 of that pentatonic scale, you want to be in your form 3, right? So your form 3 would be right here. Well, if you know if you know where your C note is, which is your one, it's right here on your 10th fret of the D string. We already talked about that one. It was part of this chord right here. So if you take that and you and you want to know where your three is, well, it's two whole steps away. And then your three to your five is always a minor third. So that's a minor third distance apart. So your five is right here on your G string at the 12th fret. So that's the same thing when we were playing the A over the A minor pentatonic, we had a minor third in it, right? So that seventh fret of your D string to the fifth fret of your G string is a minor third. That distance is always a minor third. So then, you know, to add your major third, we slid up to the sixth fret there on the G string. So you can start learning these intervals and it's going to help you navigate the guitar. You're going to be able to grow exponentially. You can use it to find chords. So if you you need to find a, a major chord up the neck or a triad up the neck, you can be like, okay, well, I have a one here. Well, where is my three? Well, in, in this instance right here, your three is right below your one because your B strings tuned down a half step. So then where's my five? Well, a five is right above the one. So that gives you a major chord right there. You want to make that minor? Just flatten that third. And if you start understanding this, you're going to start understanding chord construction. You're going to be able to find chords up and down the neck. So if you don't know all your triads, you can start finding them. Because if you have a three, you're going to have your one and your five are going to be around that same area on the neck. And then you can learn it that way. If you want to play a solo, you can, you can play the notes of the chords that you're playing you start outlining the chords if you want to play rhythm and lead you can you can play your chords and you can walk up from your one to your three and then you know play that same chord again or you can walk up like one two three four now you're at your four chord and you can start doing ideas like that you can grow exponentially and your confidence will grow exponentially in this instrument because the fretboard won't be so foreign to you anymore just because there's a lot of strings this thing is set up with the tuning and everything, so that it all makes sense once you really start understanding intervals. Everything's built together so that all the intervals are always the same distance apart and all these shapes continue to move so you can you can play these shapes up and down the neck, you can play these scales up and down the neck and they always stay the same. And if you wanna learn just a little bit more about this, then you can watch this video right here where I go into just what it's like to resolve to the one, the three, and the five when you're playing over a major chord. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.